Hi, today's session is going to be on bridles and bits and how to fit your bridle to your horse correctly. And I know it looks like we're in a tax store here, but there are so many different kinds of reins and bits and also we have snaffle bridles and double bridles, different nose bands, different head pieces, all different kinds of things that you can choose from. So we want to go over some of the basic equipment first before we actually show you how to fit your bridle and your bit to your horse so he can be comfortable. So we're very lucky today because we have the bit queen, Ruth, with us. Hi, Ruth. How are you Hi, doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm just great. So before we get started with the actual equipment, can you just talk about all of this stuff? It's such an investment. Can you it just is. talk about that? Well, the first thing that's so important to me is that the bridle and the bit is a huge amount of the communication with your horse. So sure. it's got to fit properly, it's got to be comfortable, it's got to feel nice, it has to last long, and you know what? It's expensive stuff. So I just wanted to point out, I feel like my tack is part of an investment for my horses and for me. Yeah. And this is a double bridle that I've had for well over 10 years. Really? It, it was expensive. It was about $600. But 10 years ago but it was 600 10 years ago. But if I think about if it's over 10 years old, I'm spending $60 or $100 a year. If I were going to buy a $100 bridle, it's not going to last or hold up. And the stitching is not going right. to last. And it's not going to be safe. And it can get stiff and hard and crack and be uncomfortable. So it's really important that you can spend what you can afford, but taking care of good tack will last you a lifetime. I mean, that looks like it looks brand beautiful. new. It does and, look brand new. You know, we take really good care of it. We keep mm -hmm. the moisture level, and that's going to be a whole other lesson is how yeah. to take care of your tack. But, you know, when you're looking at all this tack, and some of this is cheaper and some of this is more expensive, but if you take care of it, it's really important for your horse because it's a good investment and it's your communication to and, him. And you mentioned this, and I want to say this again because I think it's really important, safety. The last thing you want to do, let's say if your horse gets startled by something and runs off and suddenly he's strong in your hand, the last thing you want is to have a rain break. So you That's want right. to have good quality equipment that you can trust so that you're safe as well as your horse being comfortable. Good. So can you give us a little tour of yep. our, our uh, tech store I'm here? I'm going to start with the reins in this way so you can see them. And I brought a whole selection. I'll talk a little bit about why I would choose one over another. Okay. I have small hands. I have a small distance here between my joint and my palm. So I am comfortable with narrower reins. If I had bigger hands, they'd be uncomfortable this, for this you. This is very uncomfortable for me yep. because this is lost in my hand. Yeah, and yeah. I have I have small hands, yeah. so I prefer something that's a little bit mm -hmm. malleable and is narrow enough that it fits right in that joint of my finger. Mm -hmm. So this is actually uh, reins to a curb, yeah. a curb bit, and I'll show you the difference in a second. Mm -hmm. this, sec this set of reins is something that we always have in our trailer when we go to a horse show because if it's pouring down rain yeah. then we need extra grip now right. these have rain stops on them as well as this being rubberized right. so it gives you a good grip I wouldn't want to ride in these every day because they're a little rougher on my hands and they're a little bit thicker mm -hmm. but I couldn't find them narrower so if I rode in these every day I'd probably have real big callus or a blister but even if, wearing gloves even wearing yeah. gloves yeah. but if I were at a rainy horse show these would come out of the trailer pronto. and why would these come out of the trailer first as opposed to something like this this is another kind of like rubber that. rain and a lot of people will prefer this it is also a little bit thicker I happen to like these we just showed you because mm -hmm. of the rain stops right Okay. Yeah. I can have my rein stop where my finger is and relax my hand mm -hmm. rather than really holding on. Even though these are pretty grippy, yeah. I don't really know where I'm at exactly. because there's no rein stop. Yeah. So this, but this is a really popular rein. Yeah. A lot of people love this. Yeah. That's so. a good point that you can you you can have a measurement, a way to gauge if you've let the reins get too long with these rein stops. In addition to making sure that that you haven't, let's say after a lengthening, it's a given, after a lengthening, 
your reins are going to be longer. So it's a, a quick check to be able to tell That's that your right. hand is in the right place on the reins. So here's a couple more. These are a little bit of the, the braided reins. They used to be very popular. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of hunter bridles, a lot of cheaper bridles might come with reins like this. Some expensive bridles too, but the problem for me is that, again, they just feel a little stiff in my hand hmm. because they, they might be a little grippier than just plain reins. But for me, I don't have that easy gauge because right. every inch feels the same of how long my rein is. And for me, they tend to be a little stiff in my hand, but I always have a, I always have extra reins in yep. the horse trailer or if I go to a clinic or a lesson yeah. just in case something happens. Yeah. So this is the matching set to my curb rein. I'm going to hold that. Yep. These are my snaffle reins to one of my double bridles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the snaffle rein is going to be a little bit more substantial in your hand than mm -hmm. your curb rein. And you can see that even though they're basically the same rein, this one has rein stops because our snaffle always has to be our main director of communication right. with the horse, not the not the curb, which is just the curb rein. So I like not to have stoppers on my mm -hmm. on my curb so that I can let that slip through my fingers and not let this one slip mm -hmm. through my fingers. Yeah. So, so you can adjust the reins independently. Independently. It makes yeah. it a lot easier. And, and even though, and it might be a little hard for people to see, but uh, you can see that the snaffle rein is a little bit wider than the curb rein, but you can still use a snaffle rein that's even wider than this with a curb. This is a normal width, I would say, with yeah. you mm -hmm. curb rein, but, but you can have a snaffle rein, I think probably three quarters, this is probably five eighths, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you could even, if you're like me and you have big hands, you could go a, as big as a three quarter on this, but the, the snaffle rein is always wider than the curb rein. Right. Okay. okay, so I'm just going to talk about a couple of the different snaffles before we bring Moshi out here. Okay. Um, this is Moshi's bridle, I think, right? Yep. Okay, so we have a three-piece loose ring snaffle, and we're going to talk about the bits independently in a second, but, and he's wearing a cavison with a flash. Mm -hmm and a regular brow band and you know it's a lovely bridle and so it fits him and he's happy in it. And this bridle, like your other bridle, is was very expensive originally but it is very very old mm -hmm. but it's in great shape. Yeah, so if you would hold that for a second okay. I'm going to show this is a, also a snaffle to my mm -hmm. mare and I just want to show why I picked this bridle over maybe this mm -hmm. type of bridle. You can see that she is really sensitive in her pole and her mm -hmm. ears. So this bridle has a built-in pad yeah. that is very squishy mm -hmm. and will conform to the top of her pole. Yeah. And it just makes her more comfortable. If I w didn't have this, I would use a foam piece mm -hmm. underneath this mm -hmm. just to make sure that she felt comfortable. Basically, the rest of the bridle, same concept. I've got just a regular snaffle. And I've got my cavison with a flash. And that's very well padded as well. And it's also well. very well yeah. padded. And, and maybe you can mention the padding in the back. Yep, and we'll go, we'll go over that okay. too, but you have that in the same. I do, yep. When you buckle the cavison underneath the chin, yeah, thank you, there has to be some kind of padding from one piece of the jawbone and the other piece of the jawbone would be sitting like this. Mm -hmm. It needs to be absolutely centered and it has to be no skin folded or pinched. Right. And you can imagine that if you were just going to put on your nose band without the pad, that is the strap that would be underneath the yeah. chin. Yeah. And I have actually seen horses with permanent <gasps> calcification bumps oh my from having a thin strap yeah. nose band on too tight or irregular or not you know not laying flat so I always always and that's what it looks like when it's put under the chin have a full pad now while we're talking about that I have brought a couple of extras actually of these pads oh, okay right so if your bridle doesn't come with one like this one doesn't come with one okay there's there's only the attachment, it's not a crank nose band, so it's a little bit wider than this piece. But if, if I don't have a full pad behind mm -hmm. the chin, I'm going to use 
one of these three types. Right. This is fleece, like the back of a saddle pad. Mm -hmm. This is a really dense felt yeah. that takes up a lot of um, I don't know pressure. Say, yeah, pressure exactly. And this one is leather on the outside, but it has foam on mm -hmm. the inside. Any of these, and it makes a nice channel so it that it does this make strap a nice channel so they right don't they there. don't slide. Yeah. The, it right behind the jaw, like this. Yeah. And you should never be cranking it so tight anyway that you know it slips off. Mm -hmm. It should be snug enough that it just everything lays firmly behind the chin. So any of these yep. things, you know, and, and I think, you know, this one, and I have another foam one at home. This came from an old saddle pad. Right. So you don't even really have it's to go recycling. out. called recycling. Recycling. You don't <laughs> have to go out and buy it if you have, like, an old dense foam yeah. pad that you're not using anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, cut yeah. it up into the size. Just make a custom-made one for your right. horse. It should go quite all the way around the back of the jaw, but not interfere with the bit. Right. Okay. So so that's a really good point that I want to mention again. If you have the type of nose band that doesn't have the, the built-in extra pad, you want to be sure that you have something like this. We done with this one? We are. Okay, so what would you look, you want to go into the doubles here? We'll just briefly talk about the doubles before we get talking about the bits. Okay, okay. you saw my old brown rolled double bridle. I'm fond of this. This one was on my one of my first Grand Prix horses, so it's got <laughs> good value sentimentally to me. Okay, we'll take this reins down, and you can see that when I put my bridle away, I just make it tidy so that there's nothing wrinkled or kinked. Undo the curb chain. Okay, so the double bridle we have the same head stall, a head stall. We have a cheek piece for the bradoon, which is basically your snaffle bit. Mm -hmm. It's exactly in the same position and will be fit exactly like your snaffle will be. And then you have a second cheek piece from the head stall that goes onto your curb, or some people call this a Weymouth, but mm -hmm. I call it a curb. Mm -hmm. um, with a double bridle, you're only going to be using your cavison. Right. No flash. Um, this is a rolled bridle, so you can see it's got three little two slots here for this to go in. I think if I ever put this on my sensitive mare, I would put a pad underneath the top mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And you so know, there's three straps here. Now this is really challenging. How do you know which strap goes closest to the horse, and okay. then further away, and then the, further away? I'm going to move that out of okay. the way. When you put the curb in the horse's mouth, the whole bridle, the double bridle, the snaffle is going to go in first, mm -hmm. and it's going to lay behind and a little bit above the curb bit. Okay. okay. So if this is his tongue, and you're sitting back there, and mm -hmm. his head is here, and we'll show this on Moshi so it's more clear. Okay. It's going to sit so that your bradoon strap and your bradoon is closer to the horse than your curb bit, mm -hmm. okay? And when you're measuring your bits, you are, you're going to want to pick out the same size bradoon as your snaffle. Mm -hmm. Whatever your horse is comfortable in in your snaffle yep. should be the same. However, it should be slightly wider than your curb, mm -hmm. okay? When so, you say slightly, what would you say? I'd say an a quarter of an yeah. inch, an eighth to a quarter of yeah. an inch, and you okay. can see... I see the little extra here. A little yeah. extra on the side so that yeah. it lays back gently in the corners of the horse's mouth, and we'll talk about where they go in the mouth in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're putting the, the bits on, you want to look at the strap that is closest to the horse or farthest away from the brow band to put your burdoon on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll talk about the differences between burdoons and snaffles in a minute. And then the nose band is on the inside the nose band, of just all like, of that. Just like your snaffle bridle, yeah. your nose band is on the inside of all of that. Okay. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times yeah. I have seen and I have done <laughs> when I have put the bridle on and Been I'm in not a hurry. paying attention yeah. and we put the bridle on and we put it around the outside yeah. and, you know, it's embarrassing when and you're And then you go, why is the horse hard in my right rein today? <laughs>